Welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about converting regular expressions into non-deterministic finite automata. Before we get started, I want to give you an overview of the plan for the next few videos. We have a lexical specification that we want to implement, and the first step uh, is for someone to write that down as a set of regular expressions. Now, that by itself, of course, is not implementation. Uh, that's just a specification. Uh, so we have to translate that into that into a program that can actually do lexical analysis. And this actually happens in several steps. Uh, the first part is to translate uh, those regular expressions into non-deterministic finite automata that recognize the same, uh, exactly the same thing. Uh, and then those non-deterministic automata are translated into deterministic automata. And finally, those deterministic automata are implemented uh, as a set of lookup tables uh, and a little bit of code uh, for traversing those tables. So in previous, uh, in previous uh, videos, we've talked about this piece, and we've also uh, defined uh, these pieces. And so now we're ready to put the whole thing together. And in this particular video, we're going to focus on this component right here, the translation of regular expressions to non-deterministic finite automata. So the plan is that for each kind of regular expression, uh, we're going to define an equivalent uh, non-deterministic automaton, an automaton that accepts exactly the same language as the language of the regular expression. And here's a little bit of notation that we're going to use. Um, we'll define these uh, automaton for regular expressions, and usually what we're going to be doing is uh, needing to modify their start states and their final states. So we'll just indicate the start state uh, with the arrow and the final state with a double circle, and we won't worry too much about the overall structure of the machine, as long as we have a handle on the, uh, the start state and, and, the, and the final state. And I should say that in the machines we'll build here, uh, there will only be one final state. Okay, so let's begin. So for uh, the epsilon regular expression, uh, what's a machine um, that accepts that? Well, this is a very simple machine. Uh, we just have a start state and a final state and an epsilon transition between them. So this machine accepts exactly uh, the empty string. Similarly, for a single uh, character A, uh, we can define a one transition two state machine that accepts that uh, one character. So from the start state, we can move to the final state if and only if we read that particular character. Okay, so those are our two uh, simple uh, regular expressions, and now we have to uh, do the compound regular expressions. And right, these are a little more involved. Uh, so let's talk about uh, concatenation first. And so because we're uh, going to build these machines up from smaller regular expressions to larger ones, uh, we can assume that we've already converted A and B separately into machines. And so I have a machine for A, and I have a machine for B, and now all I have to do is say how I'm going to paste together these two machines to form a machine, a compound machine, that recognizes the same language as A concatenated with B. And uh, here's the construction. Uh, we'll, the start state for the compound machine will be the start state for A, so we just keep uh, that start state for A the same. And then we modify the final state of A. So we, we make the final state of A no longer a final state, and I've done that here by removing uh, the double circle on the final state of A, and we add an epsilon transition uh, to the start state of B. Now, if you think about it, that does exactly the right thing. What that says is that first we recognize some portion of the input um, that uh, belongs to the language of A, and when we get to the, what would have been the final state of A, we can jump to the start state of B without consuming any input and then try to read the rest of the string uh, as part of the language, as, as a string in the language of B. And for union, uh, we have a similar way of pasting together the machines, although the, the structure is somewhat different. So here we re add a new start state for the compound machine, and what does A plus B mean? That means either the input is in the language of A, or it's in the language of B. And epsilon transitions are really good uh, for capturing this, because we just uh, make a decision right from the start state, is this string going to be in the language of, of A, or is it going to be in the language of B? So we make a non-deterministic choice, and then we, uh, we uh, read the string as uh, using that, the automaton that we chose. And if we get to the final state, uh, either of those machines, we can make an epsilon transition to the new 
final state for the compound machine. Now remember what the notion is of acceptance for non-deterministic automata. It, you know, they make these guesses, but if there's any guess that works, then we say that it's in the language of the machine. So um, if in fact uh, the string is in the union of A or B, then either choosing A or choosing B will work, and so the uh, machine will accept the string. And finally, the most complicated case uh, for iteration A star, we have the following construction. So here's the machine for A uh, embedded in here. We've added uh, a new start state and a new final state. And now let's talk about how this works. So one possibility is remember that epsilon is always in the language of uh, A star. And so we have this transition here. We can go straight from the start state to the final state and accept uh, the empty string. And so uh, that just guarantees that the empty string is in the language. Otherwise, what do we do? Otherwise, we can make a transition, an epsilon transition to the start state of A. And then we can, uh, from the final state of A, if we reach it, uh, we can go back to the start state for, of the whole machine. And we can do this as many times as we like. Okay, so there's the iteration of A. It's around this loop right here. All right, and when we reach the final state of A, we could also decide uh, to just make a transition uh, to the final state of the machine. We conclude that that's the last time. And so this machine uh, recognizes zero or more strings in the language of A. So now let's do an example. So here's a regular expression, and we want to build a uh, equivalent non-deterministic machine that recognizes the same language. And we're going to follow our construction, uh, which works by induction on the structure of uh, the regular expression, starting with the simple uh, regular expressions and building up to the compound ones. So what do we have here? So uh, we have a machine for accepting one. Okay, so we need a machine that accepts one. If you recall, it had two states, um, and it just you know, it made a transition between the two on the, on the number one. Uh, similarly, a machine for accepting zero. Okay, and now we need to put them together in a machine that accepts either one or zero. And the way we did that was we made an, uh, a choice from a, um, from a start state for the compound machine. We can either move to the machine for accepting one or the machine for accepting zero. And then we have, at the end, also uh, epsilon moves back to the final state of the compound machine. Okay. And now we need to iterate this, so we need to be able to accept uh, zero or more of, uh, of ones or zeros. And so we're going to take this entire block here and paste it into um, uh, the pattern that we had for iteration. So how do we do that? Well, we have a new start state and a new final state. Okay, and there's an epsilon move uh, from the start state to the new final state to guarantee that we accept the empty string. And then we can just uh, iterate this inner machine as many times as we like. Uh, we can make an epsilon move to the start state. We can execute um, the machine once. And if we decide we want to do it again, well, we can do that. Okay, go back around for another time. Or from the final state, we can decide that we've seen enough and we can just move uh, to the final state of the compound machine. So this machine then accepts the language one plus zero star. And now, uh, we have a little bit more to do. We have to accept, uh, we need another machine that accepts just one. So we build another machine that accepts um, the digit one. And now we need uh, to compose the two of these things, uh, to concatenate them. And that was very simple. We just have an epsilon move from the final state of the first machine uh, to the start state of the second machine. And then these are all the states of uh, the final machine. And we just need to now label uh, our final, final state, the, the, the state that we're actually going to use in the end is the final state of the entire machine, um, which would be that one, and the start state, uh, which is uh, this uh, state over here. And that's the entire construction uh, for the non-deterministic automaton, or a non-deterministic automaton, that recognizes this language.